putting on a show first thing in the morning, aren't you? You're putting on a show first thing in the morning, aren't you? How are you today, Jaw? How's your tail today? Flap, flap, flap. All right, let's get it started, bud. Days with Jordan the Lion and Jaw begins now. Good morning, guys, what's up? Well, what are we doing today? We're going to the cemetery. We're gonna visit one of my favorite comedians of all time. Not stand-up comedian, television comedian. There's the superstar out for his morning walk. Take a look at this old Volvo. This gives me flashbacks to one of my first jobs. I worked with a guy who would only buy and would only drive these cars. And he was constantly having problems with them. I mean, they were like a nightmare to keep on the road. But I remember when I met him, he had a yellow one. <laughs> All of a sudden, one day he shows up and the doors have a big dent right there where they meet, where the door meets the fender. Big dent on both sides. I go, what happened, Nikki? And he goes, I don't wanna talk about it. I go, what happened? Finally, our boss gets out of him that he and his wife were getting out of the car the night before and they lived up on a hill. He had forgot to put the parking brake on and all of a sudden the car started rolling downhill and it had some sort of like concrete barriers or something that it was coming down through and it bent both doors backwards. <laughs> So he had to drive around with that for a while, and then he painted it thinking that would make it look better. It didn't. So then he got a new car. Another one of those. Funny thing is, that was about 17 years ago, and over the years I have passed that guy driving, because I always see those cars. He still drives those cars. Well, no rain today yet. Let's hope for no rain. I think he spotted a puppy up there. He starts walking faster when that happens. I just noticed on the bench, look at the birds. It's kind of cool. So we're heading out to Forest Lawn Glendale today and we're gonna go visit the grave of Louis Feinberg. Nicknamed the Porcupine. Professionally known as Larry Fine of the Three Stooges. Here we are. That's how we find everything. We're looking for the Great Mausoleum. No, we're looking for the Court of Freedom. Some of the most famous of all famous people are buried here. Michael Jackson, Clark Gable, um, Jimmy Stewart, Mary Pickford, Elizabeth Taylor, Gene Harlow, W.C. Fields. I think you get the point. Look at the grounds though, right? There's one of those replications of Michelangelo's David. Also buried in this building where we're going to be going to is uh, Nat King Cole and Francis X. Bushman. Here's the entrance to the Court of Freedom. And this is where the Freedom Mausoleum is located where we're going to go visit Larry Fine. There's George Washington. All right, into the beautiful Freedom Mausoleum. To find Larry, you go in here and go downstairs. And there he's buried with his son and his wife. Wow, look at that stained glass of George Washington. I don't think I ever noticed that. Patriots Terrace. Well, down here on the very bottom, you see John Joseph Fine, Larry's son, Mabel Fine, Larry's wife, and Louis Feinberg, Larry Fine. Now Larry Fine, kind of a surprising career because his early life kind of led you to believe that he would go down a different path originally. Look at all the photos that have been removed. Yes, because of something that happened in Larry Fine's early life as a young boy, you would have actually thought that he would have become a violinist. 
When Larry was a young boy, he was born and raised in Philadelphia, and his parents owned a jewelry store, and they had um, some acids that you use to test the, um, well, not only to test the metals, but to also uh, clean them. And one day as a young child, Larry pulled the acid off of a shelf and onto his hand, and he got severe burns. Now, what ended up happening was, um, because his hand was so severely burned, um, he had to do, you know, basically a physical therapy to regain the strength. And so the doctors recommend that he um, take up violin. And that's how Larry ended up playing violin in all those classic Three Stooges movies was because from like the age of five or six, he was being trained in violin. So he ended up playing that through high school and, um, he would even take his violin into elementary school and play, if you can believe it. But he, they said he always had a great sense of humor, um, but he always was playing the violin. So that's just kind of what everybody thought he would end up doing for his career. Now, when he was a teenager, he got a brief stint where he um, was training to be a boxer. And that happened until his parents found out. His parents were not a fan of that, so he ended up giving that up going back to playing the violin and entering the vaudeville circuit. So now Larry decided that his career was gonna be playing the violin. He entered the vaudeville circuit where he met his wife Mabel and eventually would join uh, with Mabel and her sister and they would have a comedy group that they would perform at these vaudeville shows. And that's also where um, Larry would end up being the master of ceremonies at the Rainbow Theater, which is where Shemp in 1928 would see him and talk him into joining the act of what was at that point, Ted Healy and his Stooges. So originally the plan was that Shemp was going to leave the Stooges act. There was no Mo at this time. Mo had basically retired in 1925 by all accounts and he was selling real estate. But Shemp knew he was gonna be leaving for a little while for a different engagement and so he talked Larry into coming in and a lot of people don't know that there were other stooges other than the ones that we saw on TV. There was a rotating door in the 20s of different stooges that Ted Healy would um, be the, the leader of. So. What ended up happening is Larry joined and eventually um, Mo ended up coming back because Mo and Shemp were friends of Ted Healy from when they were kids. Mo decided to re-enter the comedy circuit and he joined that group and that was basically the start of the three stooges that we would know it would be uh, Larry Fine, Mo Howard, and then eventually Shemp would come back and Ted Healy would get himself a contract with Fox Studios out here in Hollywood and would bring along the Stooges with him. The caveat was that Ted Healy was the leader, so he was the one that got paid and then he paid the Stooges accordingly and they said that they were paid very, very small um, percentage of what Ted was being paid. I think they said even like $100 a week. So eventually um, Fox offered the Stooges um, their own contract and they were gonna sign it until Ted Healy found out and Ted Healy went to Fox and blew his top and basically got the deal called off so that inspired um, the three guys to take off and leave um, at this time also Shemp was getting a deal um, he was getting offered to make his own pictures and to be in other pictures so um, Mo said Go ahead, kid, go be a success. We'll bring Babe in, and Babe was Curly. Curly was the younger brother of Mo. And so um, Columbia made them an offer. Curly, Larry Fine, and Mo would go off and become Howard Fine and Howard. <laughs> and, uh, and then they would eventually, you know, become superstars that we know. They would eventually go back with Ted Healy and then that would fall apart again just because Ted was known for being a pretty aggressive um, drinker and um, would play kind of thoughtless pranks on those guys and um, when he was drinking and they just eventually got tired of it. So they went off and started making short movies for Columbia Pictures for decades. So if you can imagine, Larry Fine from 1928 until um, 1970, which is when he had a stroke and had to retire because he was um, 
pretty much paralyzed or partially paralyzed originally. He was a stooge that whole time. Now what's interesting is that Larry Fine, um, he would take almost all of the abuse. You know, when you watch those, um, those shorts, Curly would get a lot of it too, but most of it would go to Larry. And so they said Larry um, was smacked around so much that like one entire side of his face was always calloused. And even when Curly would end up having, um, or Curly would eventually have a stroke in the 40s in like 1946, and he would retire from the group. Shemp would come back in, and um, Shemp would then eventually die about 10 years later. Um, when they brought in Joe Besser, Joe Besser didn't want to take the hits, and so Larry would just voluntarily say, hey, I'll take them for you. Now, I think, sadly, Larry Fine is kind of discounted for his contribution to the Stooges because he wasn't quite as over the top as Moe and Curly and Shemp, but what I think was amazing about Larry was Larry, if you watch him, he is so just, he, his responses, his facial expressions, sometimes he's the funniest guy in the room. And I think um, this was a really good example of in comedy, knowing your role. People knew what to expect out of Mo. They knew his, um, his, his uh, ranking in the group. They knew what Curly's ranking was in the group, and they knew where Larry stood, and those guys never breached um, you know, their character. They never stepped out of character. So Larry was the um, easygoing, fun-loving guy, and uh, he would, you know, anytime he would make a suggestion to Mo, he would always get slapped, even if it was a good suggestion. Now what's crazy is Larry had that, that bald head with the crazy curly hair when he first met, um, when he first met Ted Healy, he had like wetted his hair down. And so I guess in the first meeting, his hair was slowly drying as they were talking and it just started looking weirder and weirder. And so Ted Healy actually loved that look and said like, you gotta keep that look. So that's kind of why Larry always had that goofy look. But even when, you know, like I said, even when Curly uh, wasn't able to work anymore and then Shemp came back and then Shemp couldn't work anymore because he died, they would always find a replacement and they would always keep the group going. And it was sadly, really, I mean, in 1970, um, when the guys were getting much older and they couldn't quite um, sell those, those bits anymore, they had made like a, a pilot for a TV show that was part um, live action and part um, animation. And that's when Larry had his unfortunate stroke um, what's sad is that Mabel was, you know, his, the love of his life and Mabel <clears throat> ended up passing away while Larry was on the road. Um, after Columbia fired the Three Stooges, basically what they did, they didn't, they didn't necessarily fire him. They just got rid of the short movies division and then just didn't renew their contract. Gave them no thank you, no nothing. They were just out of work. So the guys at that point, that's when they had added... Um, Curly, or I think it was Joe Dorita at that point, and they went on the road. So it was actually um, when they were out on the road that Larry got word that his wife had passed away, and he immediately came home, didn't even do the gig that night. And, um, and then, as you can see, three years later in 1970s when he had his stroke, and he was partially paralyzed originally, and couldn't speak, and then once he was able to speak again, he basically decided that he wanted to go live in the um, the uh, motion picture motion picture actor's retirement home, and that's where he lived for the rest of his life. They said he would entertain um, Stooge fans, and Mo would come and visit him all the time, and it was um, you know in there that he ended up having a couple of more strokes and eventually died in 1975. And sadly, as much as they always tried to keep it together. Uh, just a few months after Larry Fine passed away, Mo Howard also passed away, and that was the end of the Stooges. But one bright side to it was that while Larry was still alive in 1959, local television kind of resurrected the Stooges' career by starting to show all of those old short movies and uh, drumming up a whole new fan base. Now here is the grave of John Fine, Larry's only son, and he passed away in a car wreck. Um, in 1961, before both of his parents, Larry also had a daughter 
um, and she actually lived a little bit longer. She, I believe she passed away in 1989 from cancer, but she was actually married to Don Lamond, the guy who was hosting the um, Three Stooges festivals on local Los Angeles television. Now, unfortunately, Larry Fine was uh, a bit of a heavy gambler, and um, because of that, he never um, really enjoyed um, staying anywhere but hotels. Um, he didn't really have a lot of choice. They said he would gamble a lot on, um, on horses and playing card games, and would also give a lot of money away to friends and people who were down on their luck. They were um, also actors. But um, they said he mostly lived in Hollywood in one place, and I'm gonna take us there a little bit later, but in 1946, he bought his one and only home in Los Feliz. So now I wanna take us over and I wanna show you the home that Larry Fine and his wife lived in and their family, basically, from 1946 until 1970 when Larry went and lived in the uh, motion picture retirement home. Take a look at this. All right, I've never seen this house before, so we'll both be seeing it together for the first time. Well, that's it right there. Sadly, the entire time that the Three Stooges were with Columbia Pictures, they never received a raise in almost two decades. But apparently that beautiful house is what Larry was able to buy in 1946 even with a bit of a gambling addiction the one and only house that Larry Fine ever owned pretty nice place definitely in a nice neighborhood now even though the hotel that Larry lived in for a long long time has been the subject of its own vlog I'm gonna take us by there again and show you where Larry lived for most of his time as a stooge once he came to Los Angeles. So if you look over here where this white and brick barrier is, that's the original house from National Lampoon's Vacation. Right there. Well, here's Ivar. We're pretty close. Well, there it is. The famous Knickerbocker Hotel. At one point, this was the premier hotel to live in. A lot of really interesting stories came out of this hotel and I'm not going to go into them now because like I said I did a very very early vlog in my vlogging career of uh, the Hollywood Knickerbocker so if you want to find out more about Houdini's wife having seance on the roof of this place go watch my Knickerbocker vlog but this is where Larry Fine lived from the early 30s when they came out to Hollywood until he bought that house that we just went to and mid 1940s now it's a aging retirement home but oh yeah what a history this place had you can see the original knickerbocker engraving behind that sign on the wall over here since it's not raining out today you know I couldn't get away with not taking John out of the park so we're gonna do that now so here's the chandelier tree on the right. I found out that apparently the city or someone like that made them stop doing it. It wasn't them. That's a bummer. It's a little bit muddy out here, but all the dogs are playing, so hopefully he'll still play. <laughs> what do you think, John? You want to keep playing or are we going to head out of here? You got dirt all over your face, don't you? Take a look at that ironwork up there. That's pretty cool. Headed off to pick up my guitars now. Check out that mural. Prisoners of the... 
barcode. All right, they're done and ready to go. I can't wait to get them home and play them. Check out that Wolf guitar. Those are great. It's like a 355, kind of like what Chuck Berry used to play, that style. See that? Are you stealing my look up there? Well, that's it everybody. I'm gonna let you go back to your own lives. Today's shout outs go out to Punky Wells, Barbara Dodson, and Ellen Chambers. Come back and see me tomorrow. We have a great day planned. Although, it did start raining, so that may foil what I was gonna do tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all then. Goodbye.